Morning. Happy Sunday. Look at the person next to you. Tell that person, Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. manalo masaya tayo. Good morning for this morning. We'll talk about detour. Are you familiar with the word detour? Yung tipong malilate ka na tapos may nakalagay na detour. Oh my goodness, ibig sabihin you'll be taking the long route or it's a different route or it's a, you need to go somewhere else. There's a straight path from point A to point B. And then you are being asked, oh, stop, detour, so that you can reach your destination. In our life, maraming detours, right? You're expecting to win, di ka nanalo, di ba? You're expecting to uh, uh, get this something, hindi mo nakuha, right? Pero pwede rin ang detour is that supposedly, you'll be losing and then you end up winning, right? That's also a detour. So, pwede positive, pwede negative. For this Sunday, eh, we will uh, put a hiatus on our six Sunday straight talking about discipleship. And uh, actually, I still have five Sundays to go, but that will be uh, uh, preached uh, starting next year, January, so that the idea of discipleship will be clear to all of us. But for now, let's talk about detour. Detour, what do we mean by detour? In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 7, Peter Fe read a while ago, sabi ni Pedro, so that the proven character of your faith, more valuable than gold, which though perishable, is refined by fire. May result in praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this morning. Thank you, Lord God, for your presence. Thank you, Lord God, for that adoring worship, that experience, Lord God, to worship you in spirit and in truth. Thank you, Lord God, for taking our worship as a you know, as an aroma, Lord God, for you. Lord, we pray for Tita Fe, who's at 25% of her vision. Uh, we pray, Lord God, that uh, make her uh, eyes new again, as if she was uh, like 20 years old. You can do that, Lord. You can make miracles. And we believe that you're answering our prayers. We lift up to you, Haiti, Lord God, who are suffering from uh, the aftermath of the storm and the earthquake and the death of their president. We pray for you, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, for Afghanistan, who's, um, uh, who needs your help right now, who needs your care. We pray that you reveal yourself to them, Lord God. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Alam nyo, ang lahi ko ay iba-ibang pinanggalingan eh. My father's father came from Arayat, Pampanga. My father's uh, my mother's father came from Ginubatan, Albay. No, so, 25% kapampangan ako. Haru, Diyos ko, kapampangan eh. No, haru. <laughs> uh, pag, pag maragul ko, kapampangan ko eh. So, ako po ay 25% Bicolano. No, so, uh, from Ginubatan, Albay. And uh, my mother's mother came from uh, San Juan, Batangas. Ay siya. Doon sa amin sa San Juan, sa Batangas, eh. Pag nagsa, nagsaing ay malata. <laughs> so, ang, my, my father's mother came from San Miguel, Bulacan. Ay doon, sa Bulacan. Di ba? So, ang punto ko, halo-halo, eh. So, sa, sa Bulacan, sa San Miguel, ang pamilya po namin ay uh, medyo doon sila sa negosyo ng paggawa ng alahas. In fact, we are descendants. I don't know if you're familiar with Dr. Maximo Viola. 
he's the one who lent Jose Rizal 300 pesos during those time no para ma-print yung no limit ang ire. Ah, lolo ko yun. No? So, siya may kasalanan kung bakit kayo may no limit ang ire nung kayo third year high school. So, alam niyo, we have relatives sa Bulacan and most of them are into jewelry business. And uh, and growing up, nakita ko na na ang ang gold pala is uh, being refined by fire. I, I realized that gold is not 100% gold. Kasi ang 100% gold is liquefied. To hold them together, may nahalo sila. So, di ba? Akala niyo yung 24 karas talagang pure. There's no such thing as pure gold. Para ma-solidify, dapat may nahalo, no? So, the purity of gold is being tested by fire as well as our life. Yung gold, para ma-purify, nilalagay sa fire, mawala yung kanyang mga sediments or whatever. No? Same thing with our lives. Parehas ang ating buhay. Pinupurify din tayo ng mga apoy, ng mga pagsubok, ng apoy ng pagkakataon. And life will always have detours. Do you agree with that? Life will always have detours. Faith will always be tested every day. And we must resist the fear that comes along with it. Giving it all to God who can more properly handle it. Yun yung sinasabi ni Peter kanina tungkol do sa binasa ni Tita Fe. Pero, alam niyo ba na meron tatlong causes ang detours? So you have this plan that you'll be traveling from point A to point B. But along the way, there's detours. Oops, you have to go to the right, go to the left, o kala mo umikot. There are causes. There are three causes, no? I'm sorry, I forgot yung bulletin na iwan ko, nagmamadali ako kasi may hangover pa ako ng pagkatalo ni Pacquiao. <laughs> Puyat pa naman ako kakaprint, dami-dami, no? Anyway, there are three causes of detours. No? Number one, probably it is caused by life. Ng buhay natin. Probably, it, there's a detour, it is caused by you. No? And probably, it is caused by God. Isa-isahin natin, tingnan natin. Caused by life. There's a detour caused by life. You see, marami nagsasabi, everything happens for a purpose. Di ba? All things work to... Maririnig mo yan sa mga, sa mga artista, di ba? Yung mga vloggers. Ah, everything has a purpose kasi. Right? Ma, 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 maririnig mo sila na everything... Actually, nasa Bible yan. Everything works together. Masa God loves you. Di ba? <laughs> so, I... It's a general cliche we, we always hear. Everything happens for a purpose, right? But you need to understand, life is arbitrary, no? Maring this is based on random choice or personal whim. That's why we have detours. No? Rather than any reason or system. The fact is, sa totoo lang, ang buhay sadyang nangyayari araw-araw. Life happens. No, certain things are beyond our control. Do you agree with that? Sometimes life just happens. No, not because nada pa ka, kailangan may dahilan na yun. Di ba? Ang hirap sa buhay natin, lagi tayo naglalagay ng dahilan. Naalala ko si Vincent Dafalong. No? I remember there was a song in the 80s by Vincent Dafalong. Uh, yung nakakilala sa kanya, taas ang kamay, sigurado, alam niyo na edad nila. So... <laughs> Diba? Meron siyang kanta tungkol sa mga nunal. Naalala niyo ba yun? No? Mga nunal sa katawan. Every mole daw has a meaning. Kapag ka daw may nunal ka, sa iyong labi, chismosa ka daw. If you have mole on your foot, lakwatsera. No? Pagka nangangati ang kamay, magkakapera. O baka kurikong lang yan. Diba? How about black cat crossing your path? Hindi ka natutuloy kasi... Malas yan. Ito ang sinasabi ng Biblia. Ha? Linawi natin, huwag kayong nagpapaniwala sa malas. Baka daw hindi kayo swertihin. So, you don't have to spend so much time trying to find reasons why things happen. Right? God's sovereignty does not impinge on the free will of man. Ang ibig pong sabihin, gentleman ng Panginoon. Hindi siya maglalagay ng negatibo 
na dahilan para pakailaman ang ating free will. Kaya niya nga gift yan eh. No? Probably, we have detours because it is caused by life. Because life simply happens every day. Uulan, aaraw, lalamig, iinit. It happens. But probably, there's detour because it is caused by you. Detours happens when we make bad decisions. Right? No? In fact, sometimes in life, the real problem, sabi nga natin nun, hindi naman komunismo, hindi satanismo, baka naman ikaw na mismo. Di ba? Instead of following God, we do it our way. Right? Uh, hindi, biblical naman ito. Ito ang interpretasyon ko sa sinasabi ng Diyos. Sabi ni Abraham, Ah, oh, okay, magkakaroon ako ng maraming descendants. Baka naman true surrogacy. Sur- surrogacy. True Hagar. Hindi eh. May sarili kasi tayong interpretation. Yan yung dark side of free will. Diba? The good side of free will, when you use it, in accordance to the will of God. But yung dark side ng free will, kapag dumiskarte ka ng sarili mo. That's why Christianity is all about being dependent to God. Alam niyo, kawawa naman to minsan si Devil. We always blame all our misfortunes to him. Not noticing, we brought all these bad things to ourselves. Right? Sinisisi natin pala, gawa kasi ng demonyo yan sa buhay ko. Di ba? Sabi nga nung kaibigan ko noon, Sir, itong, kasi tumatawag ng tumatawag sa opisina. No? Yeah, subordinate ko siya sa office. Alam niyo yung naniningil? Basta takutin ka. Kung di ka magbabayad ng over, ano man, sa credit card. Di ba? Sigurado, sisirain ka namin sa kumpanya nyo. Tatawag kami sa boss mo. Diba? So, marireceive namin yung call, tinatakot siya, sa so, takot na takot siya. Tapos ang sabi niya, kasi sa totoo lang, kaya ako nagkaganito. Itong credit card ko, demonyo. Kasi ang hilig gumastos. <laughs> ano naman kinalaman ng credit card? Eh? Plastic lang yan. Diba? Sisi tayo ng sisi sa demonyo. Diba? Alam niyo, sa totoo lang, kung ako ang demonyo, hindi ko pagkakaabalahan ng isang tao na nagsiself-destruct. Kasi I'll be just wasting my time to this person. Bakit? Dabar cards ko na yan eh. Right? Pagkakabalan ko yung taong simba na simba dito. Pagkakabalan ko yung tao na, na offer ng offer ng bahay nila for life group. Pagkakabalan ko yung tao na hilig mag-disciple. Pagkakabalan ko yung tao mahilig magbasa ng Biblia. Pagkakabalan ko yung tao na ang hilig mag-pray. Dahil yon hindi ko dabar cards yun. Dabar cards ni, ni Jesus yun. Right? Wag natin minsan sisihin yung demonyo dahil minsan it is because decision natin sa buhay natin. Sometimes we don't believe in God and we are worse than atheist. No? Tayo mga believers minsan we're worse than atheist. Kasi may sarili tayong diskarte. Pero talking about atheist, ang atheist yung ngayon is growing. No? Pero at least sa mga atheist, napansin niyo ba na sadong ironic They are always talking about God. <laughs> Busy sila i-prove ang isang Diyos na in the first place, hindi naman dapat sila naniniwala. Right? I heard of a story that there is this atheist. No? Araw-araw, pinuprove niya na walang Diyos. Bakit ka nagbibigay ng effort, time para i-prove ang isang bagay na hindi mo pinapaniwalaan? Pero muntik masagasaan yung anak niya. Ang sabi niya, oh my God! Alam niyo po, Israel got detoured. Remember? When they expected, never happened. Hosanna! Naalala ko si Ryzen. Hosanna! Ang saya-saya nila, Palm Sunday. Labasan na ng mga, alam niyo, palaspas. When they welcome nila, ang King of Israel. Di ba? Pero, di kaya the same people ang pumako sa kanya that week din. They got detoured. Hallelujah! Praise be the King! Tapos, nung pinapako na, wala naman silang ginawa. Right? Pero nakakalungkot, yung expectator, ang saya-saya niya, ay, yan ba yung hari? Yan ba yung magliligtas sa atin? Sa ba yung misaya? Tapos, yung expectation niya, got detoured kasi, Jesus, no, is being uh, crucified. So, what happened? Ano nangyari? So, yung expectation ni Israel, ay eh, na-detoured. Are you familiar what happened to Egypt? They wandered for 40 years. Simple lang naman. 
Actually, sa panahon ngayon, when you go to Israel, from Israel to Egypt, you can do it by bus. Ilang hours lang. From Egypt to Israel, kinuha nila ng 40 years. Bakit? Nag-wonder sila eh. They got detoured. After Egypt problem, 40 years in wilderness. Imagine. Bakit? Dahil ba sinabi ng devil na mag-40 years wonder sila? No. Because of fear. Fear of the unknown. Fear of not taking the promised land that was promised to them by God. And this is also happening in our lives right now. There are so many promises in our lives that not, we're, we're not taking it. We're not grabbing it. Meron nga nagbiro. Ang sabi niya, pagdating daw natin sa heaven, madami daw naka-gift wrap na regalo na may pangalan natin na hindi natin nakuha. Kasi we're so afraid of getting it. And it, the detours was caused by us. Caused by life, causes, caused by you, probably it is caused by God. Ngayon, pag ang detour, caused by God, good news yan. Right? Good news yan. Tingnan natin. No? In His sovereign will, no? for the purpose of testing, God places detours in our lives to bring out the best in us and for us to learn to trust in Him. Sabi nga, something beautiful is about to happen. At yun ang perfect plan. The reason why He's allowing detours in your life, because meron siyang perfect plan. So when you pray, when God says yes, praise the Lord. When He says no, mukhang malungkot. Dapat praise the Lord pa rin. Kasi He has a perfect plan for you. Right? Ayaw niya ng, ng ano, ayaw niya mag-settle ka sa, sa class B, doon ka sa class A. Kaya dapat magsaya ka. Diba? Nililigawan mo, ang ganda-ganda. Tapos sabi ng Lord, no, oh, lungkot ko naman, Lord. Bakit hindi ako sinagot nila isa sa berano? Diba? Ay dapat magbunyi ka. Diba? Kasi imagine mo, niligawan ni Brother Noel, Liza Soberano, binastin siya. Okay lang yun, Brother Noel. Biro mo, mas maganda kay Liza Soberano, asawa mo ngayon. Diba? Kasi there's a perfect plan. There's always a perfect plan. Tingnan may asawa mo ngayon. Yan yung perfect plan sa'yo. Diba? Pastor Bert, kinikilig. <laughs> Remember Joseph the dreamer? Remember him? Full of life, young, good-looking, ganda ng future ahead, kinaingitan, tinapon sa bangin, nakulong, binenta slavery, nakulong, pinagbintangan na ng rape, nakulong. ba? Misery over misery over misery. Detour over detour over detour, papuntang palas. Imagine, Joseph, from prison to palace. May iba akong Joseph kilala eh. From pla- palace to prison eh. <laughs> Malakan yung palace to prison. <laughs> Di ba? This, this Joseph, we're talking about the dreamer. He got detoured by God because it is caused by God so that God's name will be what? Praised. And Israel will be saved from famine. How about the blind man healed by Jesus? Lord, Makasalanan ba yung parents niya? Kasi blind siya. Lord, makasalanan ba siya? Kasi blind siya. No. They're good. But this situation is caused by God so that God's name will be exalted. May, may isang bagay ba na, na, na hindi gumagaling sa'yo? O sa kaibigan mo, kakilala mo? Why not grab the opportunity to pray for that person and believe that this is a situation like the blind man. So that the, the, the purposes, so that the purpose na, i, na i-glorify ang Panginoon will be revealed. Right? Wag tayo manalangin na parang tayo yung may power to heal. Let the glory of God be revealed. Para gumaling yung tao. How about Moses crossing the Red Sea? They got detoured. Takbuhan na. Andiyan na yung mga Egyptian. Di ba? Oh my goodness. Point Red Sea. Sabi ng mga mga ano. So 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 Moses talaga ganoon. Ah, uh, tinanggal mo kami sa Egypt, dadalhin mo kasi may promise din. Tapos hinahabol tayo, papatayin tayo. Tapos end up natin, wala tayong pupuntahan. 
dagat. So, ang ginawa ng Diyos, I will create a detour for you. Diba? Hinati niya yung dagat. Nakita ng mga Egyptians. Ha? In fact, alam niyo, hanggang ngayon, sa history ng Egypt, hindi nila ina-acknowledge yan. No? Nakita ng mga Egyptians, sumunod, sumunod sila, hinati yung dagat. Habuli natin. Paglagpas ng huling tao na Israelite, sumarado yung dagat. Nilamon yung mga Egyptians. God can create a detour in your life to glorify His name. E di pa yan ngayon yung mga Israelites. E talagang worship sila. Grabe, ba talaga ng Diyos? Imagine nyo, humati ng dagat para sa atin. Ito, good news. Hanggang ngayon, our God is Alpha and Omega. He's still in the business of parting Red Sea for you. Maniwala lang po tayo. Amen? Sabi sa Romans 8.28, 8.28, no? Uh, Kung baga, uh, all things work together for good for those who love God. I'm called. No? Lagi tinatanggal kasi yun eh. Called. No? In accordance to His purposes. You see, God's plan is at work. Remember, ano nangyari kay Job? Sa case ni Job. No? He engineers detour particularly to teach you a lesson that He can teach you in blessings. Job is so blessed. Mayaman. May magandang asawa, madaming anak, everything, meron siya. But he cannot te- the Lord cannot teach Job a certain lesson oh, how much he love him through blessings only. Kasi baka akala natin, praise the Lord. Diba? What's in your mind? Facebook. Ay, bait talaga ni Lord. Diba? That's blessing. No problem with that. But sometimes, hindi natin siya ma-appreciate lang kung blessing lang. So he allowed Job to undergo such trials so that Job will someday have a closer, tight-knit relationship with God. Kasi, alam nyo, sa totoo lang, ang relasyon, hindi lang, Hi, hello, I love you, sister, brother. Masusubukan yan kapag ka hindi na tayo nag-agree. Right? Yun ang tunay na relasyon. Pag hindi na tayo nag-agree, pero eventually, because of God's purpose, because of God's intervention, nagkaroon tayo ng agreement. Inayos niya. Doon nasusubukan ng pag-ibig. Amen? At dito nasubukan ni Job, nagkahanan siya kamahal ng Diyos. Nerestore sa kanya lahat. Dinoble pa ang nawala sa kanya. In this detour, God is in absolute and in complete control. Kaya huwag kang magalala. He has desired result and He will make sure it will happen kagaya ng ginawa niya kay Joseph sa blind man, kay Moses at mga Israelites as well as kay Job. Those are the causes of detours. Caused by life, caused by you, caused by God. But wait, there's more. How do we deal naman, Pastor, with detours in our life? So nalaman na namin yung mga causes. Let's give... Please give, allow the Bible to teach us no, how to deal with detours. Number one, we need to resist fear. No? Number two, we need to remember His promises. And number three, we need to run towards God. What do we mean by this? Let's start with uh, resisting fear. Let's watch this. No, wag kayong ma- mapipila. Meron mga pamilya ng ducks na tatawin sa freeway. Masabi na si Mother. Okay. Ay! Ay! pa, Wala na matay. Kasi kung may namatay, nakadikit na sa simento, di ba? Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, 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 Amen. Palakpakan natin ang Diyos. You can breathe now. You know what? That mother duck represents our God. 
Resist fear. Tumatakot. Kasama mo ako eh. Imagine. Ikaw nga, subukan mong tumawid ng freeway. Tao ka. Makakatawid ka. <laughs> Di ba? Tao ka. May pag-iisip ka. Makakatawid ka. Lalo na, isama mo pa yung mga anak mo. Di ba? Pero itong mga ducks na to, no fear. Actually, takot siya mga, mga ducklings. Pero pag nakikita nila yung nanay nila, diretso lang. May diretso yung nanay natin. May time na babalik na sila, di ba? Tapos, di, balik lang. Diretso lang. Bumalik si nanay. Tatawid tayo. Eh. We should look no, in that kind of perspective na yung mother duck na yun, no, ganun yung loving arms ng Panginoon. Ganun yung pag-ibig niya sa atin. Hindi niya kayo pababayaan na masaktan. Kaya dapat, no fear. Sabi ni remind tayo ni, 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 ni Pedro, sabi niya, so that the proven character of your faith, more valuable than gold, which though perishable, is refined by fire. Sometimes we get detoured because we're just being refined para mas pumuro tayo. Amen? No, it may result, ano resulta? In praise, glory, and honor, and revelation of Jesus Christ. Kung ako na witness ko, yung parting of the Red Sea, oh my goodness, this is praise, this is glory, this is honor. Iiyak ako ng iiyak, magpipraise and worship ako na magpipraise and worship. Amen? Because the revelation of Jesus Christ is there. You see, detours in life will always have fear. Normal lang yan. Don't worry, it's normal. But, but, don't dwell on it. Huwag, kang, huwag mong hayaang mamahay sa puso mo yan. How do we deal with detours in life? Number one, gayahin natin yung mga ducks. We need to resist fear. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, resist fear. Huwag kang matakot. Di ba? The very moment you first feel fear, kailangan mo siyang i-resist. The very moment na maramdaman mo, resist mo siya. In other words, you have to act against it, not to act along with it. Right? Kailangan, no fear ka. Di ba? No, naalala ko nung bata ako, sabi nila, para daw, pagdadaan ka sa, nabawa, dadaan ka maraming aso, <laughs> kagatin mo daw yung dila mo para hindi ka kagatin na aso. <laughs> ginagawa ko yun. <laughs> Matanda na ako nga, ginagawa ko pa yun. Nag-aalakad ako sa Espanya, ang daming aso. Naagat ko yung dila ko para hindi ako habuli ng aso. Kasi yun, na, nakalakihan ko na gawin mo daw, di ba? Or anything na nakakatakot, kagatin mo yung dila mo, di ba? That's how I react doon sa fear. Pero hindi na sinasabi ng Diyos. Huwag niyo kagatin yung dila niyo. If you make the mistake of dwelling on your fears and start thinking about all the reasons why you can't do what God is telling you to do, then... It won't be long before you no, develop to develop a negative mindset that will keep you stuck where you are. Madidevelop yan. Okay? Naalala niyo si David? David was an ordinary kid. Shepherd boy. Supposedly, his perfect road to success is to shepherd their family's flock and be an errand boy to his brothers at war. No, then reign as king of Israel. Okay, perfect plan. Dumating si Samuel. Sabi ni Samuel, uh, Jesse, ilan ba yung anak mo? Sabi ni Jesse, baka ito. Kasi pinakapogi, panganay. Malakas, matapino, mat- matipuno. Uh, member yan ng army ng Israel. Uh, hindi yan. Ba- baka ito, baka ito. Ah, uh, hindi yan. Uh, malaki ba ibang anak? Uh, nalimutan pa ni Jesse. Ay, may isa pa. May bunso ako. Ha? So, shepherd boy lang yun eh. Namamastol, inutusan ko. Okay, sa pamilya, ang bunso, madalas utusan yan. Sino bunso dito? Di ba? Utusan ka ng tatay mo, ng nanay mo, kuya mo. Diba? Approved daw oh. Utos ng utos. Lahat na lang utos. Tapos, damit mo, hand me down pa. Di ba? Okay lang naman. Ay, sabi ko naman, ma, okay lang naman. Pasuot po sa akin yung t-shirt ni Papa. Huwag naman yung brief. <laughs> I mean, mahirap, mahirap kasi people look down on you kasi punso ka lang. Hindi ka importante. Pero sabi ni Samuel, okay, here's the guy. Sabi niya, that's the person God wants me to anoint. Alam niyo sabi ni Samuel, basahin niyo mabuti. Walang 
uupo hanggat di sa dumadating. Grabe yung respeto, ano? Hanggat di dumarating yung future king, walang uupo. Ha? Si David lang yun eh. Utusan lang namin yun eh. Sabi ni Samuel, walang uupo hanggat hindi dumarating ang future king. Pagdating na pagdating ni David, inanoint siya, future king. Alam niyo, humility nito si David, ah, ako ang magiging future king of Israel. Ako ang papalit kay, kay King Saul. Hindi yung, hindi yung anak niya na si Jonathan. Oh, okay. Okay. Bukas, pagising niya, shepherd boy ulit. Namamastol ulit. <laughs> Di ba? Nagdadaula ulit siya ng pagkain para doon sa mga mga kapatid niya na at war against the, the Philistines. Tapos naghamon to, sabi ng Philistines, o oh, sige, one-on-one na lang. The best namin, tsaka best fighter niyo. Diba? Ang sabi ni David, ako, ako ko King Saul. Kasi, eto nga nakakatawa kay David. Sa sobrang humble, kinuha pa siya as ano. Kasi si Saul natotorment eh. Kinuha siya as a musician. So, naglilingkot na siya doon sa palace. Imagine nyo, kung iba-iba lang yun, uh, tumabi-tabi ka na, King Saul. Tanda mo, ako inanoint. <laughs> Hindi, naglingkod pa siya. Errand boy pa siya. Pastol pa siya. Tapos, sobrang humility. Sir, baka gusto nyo, ako na papatay dyan. Seryoso ka? Liit-liit mo? Eh, pinagbinigay nga sa kanya yung sword, di niya mabuhat eh. At saka yung kalasag, di niya mabuhat eh. Hindi, ito, ito lang nga gamitin ko dyan, no? Ito lang yan, no? Toink! Di ba? Bakit? Kasi sabi niya, binigay ka na sa akin ng Diyos eh. Right? Nakadetour na ang buhay mo. At nakadetour din ako. So imagine, David was an ordinary kid. Supposedly, his perfect road to success is to shepherd their family's flock and be an errand boy to his brothers at war, then reign as king of Israel. But one day, one day in the Bible, when God told David to go fight Goliath, ano yung, ano yung, ano yung, ano yung reaction niya? It says that David moved quickly towards the battlefield. Let's do it. Siya pa nagpresenta. Boss, papatayin ko na yan. Antapang. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, resist fear. Kapag nasa situation ka na tinpakot ka ng enemy, nasa situation ka na natatakot ka, resist fear because you have a bigger God compared to Goliath. When you are facing life's Goliath right now, sickness man yan, relationship problem man yan, financial problem, I don't know, but there is more bigger than your Goliath. So, get the attitude of David. Move forward. Resist fear. Kumuha ka ng bato. Diba? Batuhin mo si Goliath mo. In other words, he didn't think about it. He didn't allow fear to grip his heart and talk him out of it. He knows that the Lord is uh, making the detour in his life for the greater purpose of God, not for his exaltation, but for the purposes of God. David just did what God wanted him to do. And that is my exhortation, exhortation to you, my brothers and sisters. Do what God wanted him for you to do in your life. Ayamon Diyos ang damiskarte. Diba? Ano nangyari kay David? From a shepherd boy. Di ba? So that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold, that perishes, though it, it is tested by fire. David, the shepherd boy. David, the errand boy. David, the musician. David, the least among his brothers. Right? Pero, he undergoes this testing. Pero alam niya, nakaset forth na siya. He just waited. He never manipulated his way up to the palace. He just waited for God's perfect timing. Ito ang problema. Marami sa atin ngayon still waiting. Ang sabi ng Panginoon, be like David, move forward your Goliath. Tayo, still waiting. So many people today are just sitting on the sidelines of life. Right? They have tremendous potential on the inside, but, but, no? The enemy will talk them out of it, no? At uh, sasabihin niya, sigurado ka, yan ang pinapagawa sa'yo ng Diyos. Ikaw? Ikaw, ikaw talaga, ha? Eh, kagagawa mo nga lang nito, eh. Remember, the Word of God says, there's no condemnation in Christ Jesus. Huwag kang maniniwala doon. Huwag kang maghintay. Move forward, like David. Kasi, every time, No, they get a vision of victory. Ang mga taong mahilig maghintay, 
No, they will get a vision of victory for their life. The enemy brings fear. Ato masakit. They just swallow his lies. Naniniwala tayo. Bakit pa hilig natin maniwala sa enemy? Bakit hindi natin subukan maniwala minsan sa Diyos? Dahil yung Diyos hindi sinungaling. Yung enemy sinungaling. Right? Na, even the people around us, they can lie to us. Sasabihin nila, hindi mo kaya, hindi ka pwede dyan. Hindi ka fitted dyan. Di ba sabi nga rin ng mga kapatid ni David, ha, seryoso ka, David? No, ikaw yun. Tinawag ka ng Panginoon. Don't let that be you. Instead, just like David, obey quickly. Amen? Some of you are being called in the ministry. You're being called to be a discipler or being called to be discipled. Some of you are undergoing physical trouble or illness. And the Lord wants to perform a great healing, kagaya ng ginawa niya sa blind man. No? For His name to be glorified, not for your name to be glorified, like what He did with the blind man. Some of you are just simply being called by God to obey a simple request from Him. And only you, ikaw lang, ang nakakaalam nun. Ang ginagawa natin, we just keep on waiting. Lord, saka na lang ako magsisilbi sa iyo kapag uh, mag retired na ako. Meron ba nakasulat sa Bible lang ano, na magsilbi tayo pag retired na tayo? While you're still breathing, still moving, you can still do it, do it now. Sabi nga na Nike, just do it. Si, si, ano, si, yun ang attitude ni David, di ba? Just do it. Papatayin ko na yan kaysa iba pa pumatay. Di ba? Ang tapang eh, ang liit-liit. Pero bakit siya matapang? Kasi alam niya, sigurado siya, God is with him. We need to resist fear and face your detour boldly. Embrace every blessing that the Lord has in store for you. You need to embrace it. Sabi nga ng salita ng Diyos, 1 John 4.18, There is no fear in love. But perfect love drives out fear. Because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. How do we deal with detours in life? Sabi natin, we need to resist fear. Number two, sabi mo sa katabi mo, we need to remember kasi His promises. Di ba? Alalahanin kasi natin yung pangako ng Diyos para maiwasan natin ang mga detours sa buhay. No? Una, if you're, if you're in the promises of God, you will always be covered. Right? Kasi God has a plan for you. Parang insurance lang yan. Covered ka niya. May plan siya sa'yo. Insurance, di ba? Alam niyo, sabi nga sa Jeremiah 29.11, sikat na sikat to eh. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you, to give you hope and a future. Madalas yung kinukote. Iba, kanila pa itong ano eh. Life verse pa nila to, di ba? Ah, uh, we need to understand, ito ay sinabi ng propetang Jeremiah, ni Jeremiah, no, sa Israel. No? At tayo, para maka-identify kay Israel, kasi si Israel, confused. Yung bansang Israel, confused. Sometimes we are confused. And we need to be reminded that we, God has a plan for, God has a plan, God has a plan for us. At ang gusto niya ay i-prosper tayo at hindi niya tayo saktan, kundi bigyan tayo ng magandang kinabukasan. Remembering His promises. Jeremiah 29, 11. And remembering His promises. Kung tayo naman nangangailangan ng healing. Sa so Jeremiah 30, 17. I will restore health to you. Right? And heal you of your wounds, says the Lord. Right? Ang sarap kayo ang pakinggan pagka Wednesday prayer night. May, may praise report. Oh, kapapray lang yan. Gumaling na. Kapapray lang yan. Gum- di ba? Ang saya na. Di ba? Da- dahil nakikita natin yung mira- milagro ng Diyos sa pang-araw-araw. How do we deal with detours in our life? Sabi natin, resist fear. Remember His promises. How do you remember His promises? Always read the Word. Attend Bible studies. Attend prayer meetings. Attend Sunday. These are all basic. So that His Word someday will be what? Imprinted sa puso mo. Alam niyo sa China, no, there was a time na, na kapag ka daw nagbigay sila ng Bible, nagsmuggled, yung mga tao nag-aagawan, actually nakita ko yung parang sa Facebook, yung nag-aagawan yung tao. Tapos pinupunit nila, ako Genesis ha, Exodus ka, pagpalitan tayo next week. Ay grabe, no? Because these people wanted, just they, they just want to remember the promises of God. Alam nyo, madaming mga 
mga uh, missionaries sa China, kinakabisado nila yung Bible. Kasi pag kinapkapan sila, walang Bible. Pag nag-preach sila, nandito ang Bible. <laughs> Sige, burahin mo. Di ba? Kinakabisado nila yung Bible. Gantindi, di ba? Ganun ba, pa, ganun ba requirement dito sa LA? Hindi. Ang sarap nga ng buhay natin eh. Pero, remember His promises. Meron kang kailangan, Google mo. Di ba? Meron kang kailangan, meron kang Bible app. Kompleto. Remember His promises. Number three. Run towards God. Just like what David did. He ran towards God. Now in Isaiah 27.5, Oh, let them lay hold of my protection. Let them make peace with me. Let them make peace with me. Pag, sa Bible, pag inuulit yung word, ibig sabihin, importante yun. When God says na, hayaan mo silang makipag-ayos sa akin, ang ibig sabihin nun, no, gustong-gusto ko to, sinasabi ng Diyos, let's reason out together. Alam niyo, ang ibig sabihin nito, mag-usap tayo. Alam niyo, maraming hindi pagkakaunawaan sa buhay kasi hindi kayo nag-uusap. Right? Kahapon, nag-usap-usap kami mga pastor. Matatlo kami senior pastor, English, Korean, ako. Hindi nagkasundo kami. Di ba? Kasi nag-reason out together kami. So, ganun din ang Diyos. Ang gusto niya, lumapit ka sa akin. Ka mag- the, the, the more may problema ka, run towards me, wag run towards pa away. Papalayo. Okay? Ang ibig sabihin, Pagka may problema tayo, takbuhan na. When detours happen, your tendency is to run away from God. Paano? Okay, simple lang. No, you will not attend Sunday service. You will not attend life group. You don't want to see or hear fellow believers kasi feeling mo, kinukonvict ka nila. Right? The more you have problems, the more you need to run towards God. The more you need to seek help from people na you trust dahil alam mo, nilagay sila ng Diyos sa buhay mo. Ito pa isa. Because of the guilt brought about by our sins that we committed, tatakbo tayo palayo sa Panginoon, ito ang pangit na resulta. But by doing this, you are making it easier for the devil to do his job. Kasi lumalayo ka sa protection. Right? Para kang isang cellphone na dapat nakacharge ka sa wall para hindi ka naglolobat. Ang gagay mo, yeah, unplug mo yung sarili mo sa, source, sa power source and then tatakbo ka pa palayo hanggang sa maubusan ka ng baterya. And then the devil will just simply kill you. Right? Isaiah said, take hold of his strength. When you make this declaration, I and the Lord can handle it. Hindi lang, I can handle it. I and the Lord can handle it. No, that's not just being positive. Kasi itong mundo na ito, tinuturuan tayong, uy, basta stay positive lang. Huwag nega, di ba? Eh, sa, sa buhay ngayon, mayroon maging stay positive, lalo na sa COVID-19, di ba? So, dapat, hindi ito ibig sabihin na maging positive ko lang sa, bu- sa buhay, kundi you need to take hold of the strength of God. Yun yung sinasabi ng salita ng Diyos. We need to de- depend on God's strength, not on our own strength. Sabi nga ng Biblia, our, uh, our, uh, his, his strength is made perfect sa ating mga weaknesses. When you say you're getting stronger, that's why the scripture says, let the weak say, I am strong. Diba? Yun yung ibig sabihin nun. Surrendering to God. If you're always talking about the problem, all that does is drain you. You need to focus and depend on the strength of God. You need to find your strength in God. Sabi mo sa tayo mo, find your strength in God. When you talk defeat, strength is leaving. Aalis ang strength. Aalis ang creativity. No? Uh, those things, no? Uh, uh, Kung baga, you need to declare that you are not a victim you are a victor. Sabi nga, huwag kang pa-victim. Tinawag ka ng Diyos maging victor, hindi maging victim. You need to depend on Him. You need to find your strength in God. Kasi God is the GPS of your detours in life. That's why you need to run towards God, not away from the Lord. Right? As we end, no matter what comes your way, you and God can handle it. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, run towards God. Agay ng ginawa ni David, sinabi sa kanya ni Nathan, 
Ikaw yun, David. Iyak ng iyak si David. Sabi niya, sorry Lord. Ako yung pumatay kay Uriah. Ako yung adulterer ni Bathsheba. Sorry Lord. Iyak siya ng iyak. Humingi siya ng tawad. Grabe yung heart, no? Kasi si David, alam niyo ba si David? Pag pumunta kayo sa Israel ngayon, binanggit niya si David. Banggitin niyo si Jesus. Jesus. Israel, punta kayo. Jesus. Kasi namin yan. Hindi misaya yan. Pero banggitin niyo si David. David, King David. Kaya nga, star of Bethlehem, nandun pa, di ba? Kasi why? David is the Manny Pacquiao of Israel. <laughs> Oo. As in kasi, noong time ni David at ni Solomon, golden years of Israel yun. Doon sila pinakamayaman, pinakamatahimik, pinakamatapang, takot lahat ng katabi nilang bansa sa kanila. Kaya si David, he's the man. Si David, champion siya. Sabi ng mga tao, Praise King Saul! He killed 1,000. But praise King David! He killed 10,000. No? Talagang sikat si David. Hero. Hanggang ngayon, hero si David. Pero eto, we need to understand. Si David, Thank you Lord, ginawa mo akong hero. Thank you Lord, ang ganda ng buhay ko. Pero, totoo lang, ang pagiging champion, hindi naman nakikita yan during the times of victory. Pero how do you accept defeat? Di ba? Nung inaccept niya na talo siya, inaccept niya na mali yung ginawa niya kay Bathsheba, mali yung ginawa niya kay Raya, umiyak siya. Ano ginawa sa kanya ng Diyos? Pinatawad siya. Kaya still, he's the man after God's own heart. Right? Kagabi, di ba, sabi ni Bani Pacquiao, that's boxing. Nakakatawa, pinalakpakan siya, hindi yung nanalo. <laughs> di ba? Kasi, nandun yung admiration natin eh. Ang galing niya mag-accept ng defeat in humility pa rin. Di ba? Same thing, dapat ganun tayo in life. We need to accept yung defeat, no? At saka, iaminin sa Panginoon na we're nothing without you, God. We're nothing without you. Alright? So, dito, sabi dito, Romans 8, 28, and we know that for those who love God and all things work together for good, for those who are called according to His purpose. Si David called according to His purpose. In fact, sabi nga, pag namatay ako, maganda ata ilagay sa epitaph, no? kagaya nung kay David. Sabi, sabi dun sa, sa Acts, sa Book of Acts, si David daw, no namatay, nagawa niya daw yung purpose sa kanyang generation. Ang ganda nun sa epitaph, di ba? So tayo ba, nagawa ba natin yung purpose natin sa ating generation? Kasi si David called according to his purpose. There is power kapag humingi ng tawad sa Diyos. Kagaya ng ginawa ni Peter. Three times yung dininay, pinatawad siya ng Diyos. Si Judas nga, one time lang dininay. Pero hindi siya humingi ng tawad. Anong difference sila? Parehas malungkot si Peter, malungkot si Judas. Diba? Masama pakaramdam ni Peter, masama pakaramdam ni Judas. Pero si Peter, mingi ng tawad. Si Judas, hindi. Tingnan nyo resulta. Right? So there's power in asking for forgiveness. At one step, ang asking for forgiveness to form a partnership with God. Because your partnership with God is a force to reckon with. Yung partnership na yan, kayang pumatay ng gulayat sa buhay nyo. Amen? Kung ano ang problema mo, yung partnership na yan, kaya nilang igupo yan. Ikaw at ang Diyos. You need to run towards God. You and God are ready for it and equal to it. If you will stay in agreement with God, you need to understand, He will take what is meant for your harm and use it to your advantage. Everything was meant for Jake, uh, Joseph the Dreamer's uh, harm. Gusto niya siyang saktan, gusto siyang isetap, gusto siyang ikulong, lahat ng tao na inis sa kanya. Pero ginamit yun ng Lord for His advantage. Sabi nga, so that Anong result? That may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. The reason why you're experiencing detours in life, so that if you will run towards God, if you will resist fear, and if you will remember all His promises, ito result, you will praise and glorify the name of Jesus Christ. Amen? Now, you will eventually reach your destination with full of gladness in your heart. It's not because you are good, but because our God is great. Amen. Amen. Let's give the best clap offering to God for this morning. <laughs> Remember how to deal with detours in our life. We need to resist fear. We need to remember His promises. 
and run towards God. Now, as we end, what are take, our takeaways? Are you resisting fear or resisting God? You see, your enemy is fear, not God. Amen? There is absolutely no circumstance that God cannot bring good out of. The question is, are you part of the solution or part of the problem? Kasi nga, God will take away your problem. Ito nga rin. If you're part of it, you will be taken away. <laughs> of course, you want to be part of the solution. So when God delivers you, you are the one of those who are also to be delivered. It's time to seek and trust in the living God through worship. Ganda nung kinanta natin kanina, sabi, Holy, no? Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. You see, we're serving a holy God. Amen? And for us to avoid the detours in life, I would like you to, I'd like to ask you to please stand. And let us make this as a prayer of our hearts. Declare this morning that we need to resist fear, we need to remember His promises, and we need to run towards a holy God. Let's have a beautiful relationship with Jesus Christ. Let us sing this song as a prayer of our hearts. Hallelujah. holy hallelujah there is no one like you there is none beside you Jesus oh open up our eyes Lord God oh, show us Lord God fill us with your heart and lead us Lord God in your love and also to those around us Lord God Jesus Again, let's declare it. Let's sing it to God. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, you are our fair foundation, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, hallelujah. Declare this morning. Make this as a prayer of your hearts. Declare His holiness. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. If you are here, I will not ask you to come forward because it's pandemic time. But I want you to create your own altar wherever you are. The Lord is calling you right now. He's telling you, hey, stop detouring in life. I love you, my son. I love you, my daughter. You need to understand that you need to resist fear. I am here. I am here with you. Just like that mother duck. Follow me and I will lead you to a place where I want you to be. You need to understand that you need to remember my promises. Put, your wor put my word in your heart. Imprint it in your heart. Leave my word every day. Understand that you need to run towards me every time, every time, every time this Goliath is confronting you because we are a force to reckon with. You and I, our partnership, we are a force to reckon with. We can do great things because I love you. You are my child, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we ask for forgiveness for all the sins, all the things that we have done, Lord God. 
This morning, we accept you as our personal Lord and Savior. We believe, Lord God, that you died for us, rose again from the dead, Lord God, and we acknowledge that you are the King of kings and Lord of lords. Thank you, Lord, for inviting us to be part of your family. Lord, from now on, I want a relationship with you, Lord God. And for those people, Lord God, that who, who wants to uh, 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 reinstate their relationship with you, they, they've been a Christian for a long time, Lord God, and they just want to uh, uh, rededicate their life to you, Lord God. Lord, we ask and we rededicate our life to you. From now on, we will not listen to the enemy. From now on, we will not listen to ourselves to our own voice, but we will only listen to your one and only voice. We will resist fear. We will remember your promises. And we will run towards you every time, every time there's a Goliath in front of us. We love you, Lord God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen.